Welcome to UAPB Currents. We're joined today by Peter Smykla, who is on the board of the directors for the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society. Yes, ma'am. Here in Palm Bluff, Arkansas. Welcome to UAPB Currents. Thank you. Um, now, tell us before we begin a little bit about you and how you came to be involved with the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society. Well, I was, uh, I've always been a railroad fan, I guess, since I was eight years old, my first road and my first steam engine. Uh, my father was in the stone business and he went to a quarry and they took me along and they didn't know what to do with me while they were in their business meeting. So they put me in the fireman's seat and I spent the day going in and out of the quarry in Massachusetts. So that's where, I, where my love of railroad, I think, started. And I, uh, when they decided they were going to take the 819 out of the park, that's when I joined the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society. Okay. And that was 30 years ago. Our, okay, so you, um, now we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Cotton Belt Rail yes, Historical Society yes, this year. That's what we're here to talk about today. So you were there from the beginning? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, and um, what capacities, I guess, have you served, always been on the board of directors? Well, I've or been chairman, president, board of directors, flunky, <laughs> you know, mechanic, just, you know, gopher, right. do it all. Right, because we know that um, whenever you um, serve as a volunteer for a nonprofit organization like this, that you all, everybody has to pitch in and do a little bit of everything. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Now, um, tell us a little bit uh, about, I guess, what the, um, a little bit about the railroad here in Pine Bluff and um, what okay. the Cotton Belt is. Well, the Cotton Belt was started as the Tyler Tap Railroad between Tyler and Big Sandy, Texas back in 1877, four years after you started your school. Okay. And, uh, it got to Pine Bluff in 1882, but uh, uh, the bridge wasn't finished till 1883 across the Arkansas River. When you, the, they, it was a, then called the Texas and St. Louis Railroad, okay. and uh, it evolved into the Cotton Belt through acquisitions and construction. And the interesting thing about the Cotton Belt was when it was built, it was built as a narrow gauge railroad, three feet between the rails. Now the standard railroad is four feet eight and a half inches like the old Roman chariots mm -hmm. and so they couldn't move their freight cars to other railroads so on one day in 1886 they moved the whole railroad moved the rail out and widened the, the track in one day which I think is amazing in one day they in one day all the people who worked for the railroad and I guess a bunch of extras got out there and they had put longer ties and they just moved one rail over in oh. one day the okay. whole railroad changed the gauge. Because the, um, you know, actually creating a railroad, I've seen pictures and old movies of people building railroads, took a, quite a bit of time, right? Yes, ma'am. Of just creating the initial, I guess. But so the, the Cotton Belt, as I said, they, they came here in 1882, and then uh, Samuel Fordyce was, was, it took over after they went in receivership, and they decided to build the shops in Pine Bluff. And you know, when I came to Pine Bluff in 1959, why uh, there were a couple of thousand people working out here at the Cotton Belt. They had the car shops and everything, and uh, it was a big thing, Pine Bluff. The building we use for the museum, for instance, was built in 1894. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, now, um, as you said, the Cotton Belt and rail was something that was very big in Pine Bluff, I guess, at that time. Is it still, uh, is the rail still as? Well, it's still important, of course, for transportation. And, but since the Union Pacific bought the railroad, why it, it's basically a one-way railroad. They go south. Mm -hmm. And they combined it with the old Missouri Pacific through Little Rock, which goes north. And so uh, we're, we're a two-track railroad 50 miles apart is what it amounts to. Okay, all right. Now, um, what else when someone comes to the um, Rail Historical Society, um, what exactly is the experience that they well, have? Well, the Arkansas Railroad Museum, uh, let's go back to the beginning. It was started, uh, let's go back even further. In, eight, in 1955, when the Cotton Belt went out of the steam engine business, they went to diesels. They 
they donated engine 819 to the city of Pine Bluff. Yep. They put it out in, in MLK Park. And uh, in 1962, the J I was in the JCs then, and mm -hmm. we, we raised money to move it and build that shed over it where it sat for years. Mm -hmm. Then in 1983, a bunch of people in town got together and thought, you know, we ought to restore this thing. And they were going to cosmetically restore it and put it behind the courthouse out there where the where the Saracen's Landing oh, is okay. now. And uh, anyhow, we started the Cotton Beltway Historical Society, and and some of the folks said, well, why don't we get that thing running again? And uh, so that became a change of plans. And oh. and the Cotton Belt had given us four. Uh, four box cars to put behind it to make a, a kind of a museum train and mm -hmm. we decided that was not as good as having it down there in the old cotton belt machine shops. The machine shops, that's our, our current museum and the machine shops were built in 1894. They're the only building I know of in Arkansas where steam engines were actually built, okay. not just repaired. There were lots of places that repaired them, but they actually constructed them. And of course, the 819 was the last steam engine built in Arkansas, oh, okay. and we have it down there now. Uh, we ran from, uh, we, well, we took it down there, got it in, in, in there on December the 1st, 1983, and uh, spent two and a half years restoring it. We ran it for the first time in April 1986, and we went to Fordyce, for Fordyce on the Cotton Belt Festival. Yeah. We, we then took it to uh, Little Rock. Uh, later in June, and we went to the Arkansas, we were the Arkansas Sesquicentennial Centennial Train. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we stopped and picked up Governor Clinton, uh, and, and we went into Little Rock with, with the train uh, and uh, celebrated Arkansas's 150th birthday. Mm. Uh, we, we later, uh, well, we would run every year starting in 1988, we would run, run to uh, Tyler, Texas annually from Pine Bluff to Tyler through 1993 and in 1990 we took the engine to to St. Louis oh, okay. for the uh, National Rail Historical Society conference. Okay now what I guess exactly well we won't get into that because we got to go to break in a second so but when we come back I want to talk a little bit about what it actually takes to get uh, steam engine back up and running because I can imagine that there aren't necessarily you know the steam shops aren't running anymore here and so they it wasn't an easy task I'm sure it was not okay but of course we had the cooperation of the railroad at that time okay all right when we come back after this break then we'll find out what it takes to get a steam engine back up and running and a little bit more information about the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society. We'll be right back on UAPB Currents. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to UAPB Currents. And again, we're joined by Mr. Peter Smykla, who is on the board of directors for the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society here in Palm Bluff, Arkansas. And before we went to break, we were talking about um, this steam engine that 
was restored and has been running and you drove it places that I have had cars that couldn't go. So <laughs> well, you don't drive it. You oh well. <laughs> okay. There's no so, steering wheel on a locomotive. Okay. So but anyhow, we well, ran it, and we so we were talking about how you um, how it was restored. Okay, we pulled it out of the park and. Uh, as I said, it, we took it downtown. They actually cut the track there where the, you know, where the armory is. Mm -hmm. They cut the track in the Cotton Belt uh, Railroad and they, push, they took it out across the, the, ar the armory parking lot and put it out there and the, the local train took it to town. And we got it in on December the 1st, 1983 and put it in the museum on the same track that it was originally built on and started work on it. And uh, it took I think it was 45,000 man hours and a uh, hundred and some odd thousand dollars worth, you know, was spent to restore it. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, a lot of it was helped, we were helped by the Cotton Belt mm -hmm. uh, Railroad. If it hadn't been for them, it never could have been done. And Mr. McClanahan was the superintendent and he bent over backwards to uh, help us. Uh, we, as I said, we took it out and we finally tested test ran it on the track on April the 17th, I think it was, 1986. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then from there on, it's it's all history. Uh, and is it something, is it still it's running It's in the museum. Today? No, no. no. It, uh, the last time we ran was October the 15th, uh, 1993. And if you remember correctly, in September 1993, a man ran his tugboat into into a bridge down in Mississippi or in Alabama, mm -hmm. and derailed Amtrak engine 819. Ironic that it was the same mm -hmm. number, and killed all those people. And so the railroad went to. Uh, they said, "Well, we'd been carrying 10 million dollars worth of insurance." They said, "You've got to have 200 million." Well, a you can't buy 200 million dollars worth of insurance, and b if you could buy it, nobody could afford to buy a ticket. Mm. So we went to the legislatures in Arkansas and Texas, and the Arkansas legislature in 95, and the Texas le legislature in 96 uh, passed laws saying we were only liable for the 10 million we had been carrying, mm -hmm. which sounded really good and cheered us up. And then on September the 14th, 1996, the Union Pacific bought the Cotton Belt, and the chairman told Mr. McClanahan and me that we would not run that locomotive on his railroad. Right. And so it just sits there and it was stripped down in 1973. The federal government mandates that you have a 15-year uh, inspection. And so it was stripped down, the boiler uh, tubes were taken out because they, they needed replacing. And uh, we ultrasounded the boiler and it wasn't pregnant, but it, the steel was also sound. <laughs> I mean, that was the reason, obviously. You're right. Uh, a little humor there. Uh, but it, it sits there right now, stripped down, because it would cost several hundred thousand dollars now, and especially since we don't have the, 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 quali the qualified people, as you said, are all gone, mm -hmm, right. uh, unfortunately. They moved up to the big roundhouse in the sky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, it would take several hundred thousand dollars, and so it just sits there, stripped down. But people can then see, since we do have it stripped down, you can go in the museum, you can see the parts. They're all labeled so you know what you know, if you're taking students there, and we have a lot of student groups okay. come through, they, they see the parts and they know what a tire is or a driving rod and so forth and so on. Okay, all right, and um, that's a great segue for us to go into the museum. historical museum, right. And um, so um, what exactly is the purpose of uh, the museum? The Arkansas Railroad Museum was set up in 1983 to actually, first of all, to house the 819. Mm -hmm and to uh, show Arkansas Railroad history. I mean, just to keep people informed because a lot of young folks just don't, right. don't know that much about the railroad. Right. And there's a, the history of railroads in Arkansas is very uh, varied and great. And uh, so we have a one and three quarter acre building, which is the old machine shop, and it is our museum. And we have, we're unique in two ways. We have, uh, the only three pieces of cotton belt steam equipment left in the world. The 819, engine 336, which we took out of the park in Louisville mm -hmm. and moved up here and put in the building. And the old steam relief crane, which was a crane they used to pick up their mistakes. Uh, they, they, the cotton belt gave us the whole train just before the Union Pacific uh, uh, bought them. And so we have the, the, the 
crew sleeper inside and the crew dining car inside and the, oh. the big 200 ton steam crane sits outside with uh, the rest of the cars. Okay, and so are those things that when you come to the museum that you are able to see the sleepers oh, yes. and the dining cars? Or? Oh yes, yes, you can go in, the, the, the cars okay. you can go in. Uh, we have uh, several, several, we have a lot of pieces of equipment. We have three cabooses, we have a army guard car, we have a snow plow, and we have two locomotives, two diesel locomotives, and of course the steam locomotive. And uh, those two cars we talked about, uh, and a passenger car, that people can go in. You can go in them, okay. Yes, it, it's a hands-on museum. It's okay, not, we don't have right. everything stuffed and mounted like most railroad mm -hmm, museums. Yeah. They're stuffed and mounted, and you have a, a fence between you and, the, and, and the, the equipment. You can't see it, but here you can get on all of our equipment. Oh, okay. Or all that that's open. A few pieces, you can't. And the other, the other way, we're unique. We're the only place in the world. We have three diesel locomotives built by Alco Products which used to be the American Locomotive Company, and we're the only place in the world that those three models are still in existence. One of them is, is the only one of its kind. There are four of one other, and there are five of the other, and nobody else has, has got the combination but us. Oh, okay, all right. Now tell us um, a little bit about, because I must say that I am one of the people here in Pine Bluff who has, I've driven by the museum, I know where it is, and um, but I have not, I've yet to visit it, so. Sh shame on you. I know, I know. Okay, <laughs> the museum is open six days a week. Uh, we're open from nine till two on Monday through Saturday. Admission is free. We do uh, accept donations mm -hmm. and appreciate them as, as one of our, uh, one of the ways we finance the museum since we no longer can run the train. The yeah. train, the train trips used to pay for the museum. Okay. We get no money from the state, county, or city. Mm. And so uh, our money comes, uh, let's say, from donations, Private gift donations, shop sales. Right. And the big thing for money is the first, week in, first weekend in uh, April, on the first Saturday in April every year, we have our annual Railroadania show and sale. And right. that's the big money raiser for us. We clear out most of the equipment, we bring all these model railroads and dealer tables and everything in. And we get a couple of thousand, a couple of three thousand people will come visit, and that's what that's what pays the freight. <laughs> okay, all right. And uh, when it's time for that, then we'll have to get you to come back on so we can remind everybody about about that railroadania. Railroadania, yeah, because that's a term that applies to uh, memorabilia, you right. know, like lanterns and so forth and so on that, that pertain to the railroad. And we also have a uh, we have a couple of rooms which are air conditioned. Now the main museum is not air conditioned. Mm -hmm. I mean it's, it, as I said, it's one and three quarter acres with a 40 foot ceiling and no insulation. Right. You, you don't try an air condition that. But <laughs> we do have an, a, an air conditioned uh, section which has all the old timetables and old lanterns and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is all in there in a, in a climate controlled uh, uh, situation right. where it's, it's a lot more comfortable. Because in the summertime we do get pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, the fall and spring are the best times to come to the museum. Okay. All right. We're going to go to break and when we come back then we're going to talk about um, the big event that we asked you to come out and speak about today which is the 30th anniversary of the Rail Society. All right. And we'll be right back after this on UAPB Current. <laughs> A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> what would the neighbors think? <laughs> 
<laughs> I see you. Come look at Mr. Feather. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of there. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to UAPB Currents. And again, we're joined by Mr. Peter Smykla, who is on the board of directors for the Cotton Belt Rail Historical Society, who is celebrating their 30th anniversary this year. And it's your 30th anniversary as well with them. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma um, so tell us a little bit about that event. All right. The event is going to be held on October the 12th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., the museum, of course, the normal museum hours. We will be open. We will have uh, an open house for uh, the whole community, mm -hmm. or, or even more than community. You know, we get, we get visitors from 40-some-odd from, uh, countries in all 50 states, so oh, we're wow. open to anybody. Right. Uh, and so uh, we will have the, the mayor and I, I believe the county judge. I, I'm not sure exactly who all the people speaking will be, but there will be a bunch of wheels. Hopefully the city council will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we'll be celebrating the fact that we've been there for 30 years and uh, we think we've added something to the community. Besides just being informative, we are a destination for people. We bring money into the city of Pine Bluff. We're mm -hmm. a tourist destination. As I say, we, we get people from all 50 states and uh, the last person we I think was last week we had somebody some people there from England okay. not England Arkansas <laughs> but England England right and right and um, so what are some of the other things we talked about the hands-on activities that you can um, have yeah. an opportunity to experience when you come to the museum and you'd also gotten into the some of the displays and exhibits yeah, everything will be house. everything will be open mm -hmm. and we will have volunteers there to show folks around, answer the questions, make up answers if they if we <laughs> don't know the answers to the questions. Uh, I tell people that and you usually get a laugh out of folks mm -hmm. for that. And if you have any questions about it, you can call us at 870-535-8819. Mm -hmm. That's our that's the museum phone number. And Miss Miss Elizabeth will be happy to give you any information you need. If, yes, if she you're, would. Uh, and so. Uh, we, uh, as I say, all the exhibits will be open. Uh, you will, uh, volunteers, we would love to have more volunteers. Uh, if you have any, any of the students who are, who are interested in railroads and railroad history uh, and, and can spare some time between classes. I know, mm -hmm. I know classes sometime are rather, uh, you know, time consuming. Right. But I don't know about Saturdays. Do you have Saturday classes at the university? Um, not often, not so often. So on Saturdays, if, if some could wanted to come help, we would we'd love to have volunteers. And right. Say, and now what exactly do, what purpose do volunteers serve? Um, what kinds of things would a volunteer look forward to being able to do? Because some people aren't necessarily comfortable, I guess, leading tours, but I imagine there are other things that you all need assistance with. Well, that's... You know, we could we could use help. We always can use help just in, in just maintaining the building. Right. That's that's something we can always use. And there are some projects like right now we're we're on a project to restore a, a railway express agency truck, a 1957 truck that has been sitting out for years. Mm -hmm. And so we have people working on Saturday uh, who are restoring that truck. Oh, okay. And so, so that's something that so you there guys are things, personally yeah, There know. are things uh, who, f folks who are mechanically inclined could help us out, that'd be great. Okay, all right. We have an industrial tech department out here, and that that would definitely be something that they could um, probably assist with. Um, is there any other information that we need to know about the 30th anniversary uh, celebration? I think we're going to have punch and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. that's, that's always something. And that, that, that'll draw the, the, the little rascals anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, so this is an event that's for all ages. Yes, it is. And the it's museum for all ages is, and all, as well. All folks, uh, as I said, we just, uh, we're just glad that we've been here for 30 years. Uh, we hope to get younger, some younger folks in to help continue this thing, and mm -hmm. uh, it, I think it's an asset to Pine Bluff and the community, and uh, we've got to hold on to our history. We seem to 
be, even in schools, we seem to be losing some of our history of this country and, and the, uh, the things that got us here. Mm -hmm. And we need to have everybody cognizant of that, I believe. Right. And um, I guess we want to encourage the schools in the community, um, the elementary schools and things, to set a schedule tours with oh, you all because that's how you keep just the interest. You, you got to call Miss Elizabeth and schedule so we do have. We know we have enough people there on mm -hmm. the days they're coming, and in the spring especially, it seems like all the the grade schools they in really. in the area they all look for something to do in the mm -hmm, spring and they right. take field trips mm -hmm. and uh, we are a field trip location we, <laughs> we get a bunch of them right uh, we'll have two and three groups a week mm -hmm. okay all right well um again uh thank you for coming and joining us and letting us know about the 30th anniversary and about the rail museum for people like myself shame who haven't <laughs> <laughs> haven't been down to the museum yet, we, but we say y'all come right. Yeah. And, okay, and we'll come again. Those hours um, that Nine the till museum two, are open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. Uh, we, we we even if you had a group or something that it, it is imperative, we probably could even arrange to to let you in on a Sunday afternoon. But you know, that's church time and so forth. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Um, Call the number on the bottom of the screen and schedule a group event, a family event to go out Monday through Saturday at 9 to 2 and find out more about the rail here in Pine Bluff in Jefferson County. One other thing, we do have, we have family reunions that are held okay. down there. We have the table facilities and so forth and we do have groups uh, and of course we have groups when the, uh, when the pilots come in. Uh, oh, okay. th th mm -hmm. th we, they'll come down there and, and so forth. So uh, we're, we're open to all and waiting to see you. Okay. All right. Um, so that they're equipped and ready to go for any event that you have. And again, we want to congratulate you all on 30 years um, with your uh, society. And we'll be looking forward to you coming back and talking about Rail Mania in uh, April, and if you don't hear from us before then, then make sure that you all are there. That first April? First, first that would be April the 5th of 2014, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, go ahead and put that on your calendar now, and until then, we'll be looking forward to seeing you on October 12th. October 12th, 9 a.m. to uh, 2, 2 p.m. I, I believe the, the speechifying starts around 10 o'clock, something like that. That's <laughs> okay. when the, the formalities start, but anyhow. Okay, all right, and spend the day with the Arkansas Railroad Museum. Um, thank you again for joining us, and we will see you next time on UAPB Current.